Hi guys, it is Denma, and I am here, finally, with another video. A lot has happened in the past few months, and I'm going to try to, like, give you, like, a question note to what's been going on. A couple months ago, I kind of got sick, like, a cold, fluish type sick, and I came in here to stay with my parents. Whenever I get sick, I come in and sleep on the couch in my parents' house. That's where I'm filming today. Um, and I have lots of doctor's appointments. And usually after I go out into town for like the whole day, because most of our doctor's appointments are in a town 45 minutes away, because you know we live out in the middle of nowhere, it takes me a couple of days to recover. So I would stay in here until then. And I just kept getting in this cycle of getting sick, going to appointments, then having to recover, and I just couldn't get back out there. And then recently, I finally made a trip outside. I hadn't been out into town for two weeks at least. And we went out to get some supplies from Walmart and we went to eat first. Um, and as we were leaving, I was picking up the money to put in the tip jar and taking, you know, you're going to take that last sip of your soda because they don't have to go cups. So I did that and when I reached like that to get my cup, my palpitation started and I'm used to getting them like once or twice a month and bearing down and all that doesn't seem to work the only surefire way even though it's gross that works is for me to make myself throw up so after I just ate I went and tried to throw it up to stop it and it wouldn't stop so we went to Walmart and you know I have to drive around those little carts because I'm I can't walk for very long distances without like ex over exerting myself plus my back pain I timed it, I can stand up straight for seven minutes before my back pain starts hurting, and that is with medicine, tramadol. And I don't want to take anything stronger than that because, you know, bad things happen with people on that. But, um, so we go home, and basically, I did, I tried to do what I did last time when I had palpitations that wouldn't go away. These last two times were I was trying to throw up and they didn't go away. The time before, I ended up basically taking my Ambien and my Clonopin and all my sleeping meds early and going to sleep and just making myself stay asleep until they kind of faded away and that worked. So I tried that again and after about 24 hours, I think it was actually 25 hours, my dad put his foot down I was like, no, we're going to the ER. So we went to the ER, it was a 45 minute drive like I said. Um, my heart rate had peaked at 201, um, which isn't good, it's supposed to be a lot lower than that. Like, I think in the 80s and 90s. Um, when I got there, I, I have, um, um, pulse ox. It tells you that your oxygen level and your heart rate, which is very important for me. Like, if I feel, like, lightheaded or something, I'll put that on and see, hey, maybe I'm not getting enough oxygen. I have oxygen here to use in case I need it, but I haven't had to need it. So, I get there, and she sees my pulse ox with the beats of, they were triaging me and she sees the 201 and she's like what are you doing here and they immediately take me back to the ER like room and the first room looked like somebody had been murdered and there was blood everywhere luckily the person that was stable thank god I heard the um, heart rate monitor um, but um, one of the nurses t told me later that one good thing about this ER is just when you open something or use something, you just drop it, unless it's like a sharp or something like that, like a needle. Um, and they'll clean it up after the situation has become stable. So I'm trying to get the light so you're not too blinded. But anyway, um, so I went to the, the third room on this side. I've never been to this hospital's emergency room, so it's actually really nice. Um, so, of course, everyone's freaking out, like all the nurses and a couple of doctors and stuff. And they're all like swarming around me. I get nervous when I'm vlogging when my parents are home. So I always think I think I'm crazy, but they should have known. Um but yeah everybody was like swarming around me and they were really nice. Really, really nice. Um but I started to panic and they wanted to put IV in but everybody else was like putting defibrillator stickers on, EKG stickers, um lots of things. They would want had my pulse ox on another, their pulse ox on another finger. Um, I told the IV lady that, hold on, let them get what they want done. 
and then you can put the IV in because I'm one of those people that I get really nervous when it comes to IVs. The little like butterfly catheters that they used to draw blood with on the but IVs aren't that much bigger. But it's just I have to watch it go in. So, so but they got that in fine. Um, I'm, I've got notes down here, so I'm trying to go. Um, at first, they tried to make it like a trick. Then they made me blow into a syringe really hard, like they took the plunger out, and I blew into the end of the syringe really hard, and they flipped me on my back to see if that would reset this muscle or whatever, but that didn't work. So they had to give me a medicine, I don't remember the name of it, but it basically stops your heart for a few moments. Um, the first dose was the first dose, uh, it didn't work, so they gave me a second dose, which worked, um, and it had... It wasn't bad. Everybody's like, you're gonna feel like crap for a while. Like, that, that everybody complains it feels so bad. I'm like, you just have to breathe through it, and it feels like it feels like the back of your throat's burning after you've been running too long and you're overweight or out of shape, like me. Um, and it stopped it for like, it felt like five or six seconds, maybe. I don't know. Um, but that one did work. So I literally died twice, <laughs> technically. So that was interesting. Um, they admitted me overnight um, for observation. They contacted Duke um, to see what they wanted to do further because that's where my main um, pulmonary care is, Duke University in Durham. Um, they decided they wanted to see me ASAP, had a room, held it for me, which happens to be the room that I've had every year for the past three years. I've had to be admitted, well, including this year's so three years. So. They transferred me. The EMTs were really cool. Um, they had a really good sense of humor. Um, they went in the back with me. They actually let my mom ride with me so I wouldn't have as much anxiety knowing my mom was there. Because my mom's kind of like my, my safety blanket type of thing. So, um, But the one that the guy in the back with me, he was kind of a nerd. So we were talking about World of Warcraft, horror movies, fantasy movies, books, stuff like that. Um, so it was pretty fun. He helped ease, make the ride easier for sure. Um, and that was like the first day of Vident. Um, I think it was just their day, day and a half maybe. I wasn't there that long. Once I got to Duke, I was put in my room, and out of the 50 plus rooms, I always get 78, 25. They have this quad, and there's at least 50 rooms there. And and then the nurses came. I'm like, I remember you, and the doctor came. I remember you, and it's just like there was this one nurse that's like really hyper and always bright and cheery. I'm like, where's Shri at? And they said, he actually left last week. And I'm like, oh. So, but anyway, I was also diagnosed with C. diff, which took a couple days because you have to get a um, stool sample. <laughs> and they have to put it in like a jar, uh, some kind of petri dish and see if a bug, basically the bug grows. Which is, C. diff is like an infection in your gut. And you can get that from uh, somebody that is contaminated with the virus or the infection if they go to the bathroom and don't wash their hands. Now when I go to the bathroom I use hand sanitizer. I don't necessarily wash my hands. I just use hand sanitizer and then a little bit of lotions and hand sanitizer does not get rid of this virus. So I know the only bathroom I went into was at the place we ate and I did touch like the walls and stuff so I'm pretty sure I got it there. So I'm on an antibiotic, a liquid antibiotic, um, for two weeks for that. So I'm actually, probably the next couple of days are my last. Um, they came in and discussed a lung transplant. Um, but one doctor, he was super nice and he's like, yeah, you need to, when you get home, you need to get in this, um, cardio pulmonary, um, exercise routine at the hospital blah 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 and that we have to lose at least 30 pounds to even get on the list and I was that kind of I was like oh, okay and then after he left it hit me like okay if I don't get this lung transplant then I'm going to kind of die and then another doctor came in and he put it and I, literally that night I always have a problem sleeping at the hospital so they give me my sleeping meds and then as soon as I fall asleep they come in to do vitals and they had to put an IV. I still can't adhesive off. I have to. I have soaked my arm. It just will not cut off because they don't. If you have an IV from another hospital, they have to take it out within 24 hours. 
So they put it in their IV at like one o'clock in the morning and um, so I couldn't get back to sleep. So I ended up watching some music videos like Linkin Park and I just started bawling because all the lyrics matched up so well to how I felt at the time and I don't want to tear up but and I was just like crying all until like the sun rose and when they came at like 5 a.m. which all blood because they just put the IV in I thought they were gonna get it from the IV and I don't like being poked and prodded when there's an IV there but this was like my fifth stick for blood in the morning and I'm just like I started just crying and the woman's like I'm gonna pray for you and all that stuff and it was really sweet and she held my hand said everything's gonna be all right and that weighed heavily on me and then because a lung transplant is not something I want um I'm one of those people that people die when they die I wouldn't have gotten this little like doohickey here if it wasn't for my parents that bribed me with the $50 um stuffed animal um, I would have just gone home and gone to hospice and just lived out my life. But, um, I'm not going to be one of those people that wants a transplant. It's hard to explain. Basically, my mind, I have a feeling if I did get one, I would get anxiety because somebody else's parts are inside of me. And that just so float. I mean, I've had my gallbladder taken out, but it's out. That was no big deal, but somebody else's parts, no, that just doesn't, that would cause me too much stress, and all the drugs that they give you for, or to keep you from rejecting, your body from rejecting, the transplant, I would have to be off my pain meds from my back, off my psych meds for months and months, and that is not good, so... Plus, I wouldn't really thrive. I'd rather those parts, those organs go to somebody who wants to continue on, who wants to thrive and keep going. And I just, if it's my time, it's my time. That's why I'm a DNR. Everywhere I go, do not resuscitate because there's a plan for you. And if you're not meant to be here, you're not meant to be here. So, um, but I know the doctor came in and explained it very uh, a lot better than the other one he says there's like a spectrum of where you're at on the transplant scale and you're actually on the very far end away from getting one you're on the good end you aren't as bad as somebody who needs one you don't have to use oxygen you want to get out you want to exercise you want to go and play with your kids in the pool which I find I'm going to get set up hopefully in the next couple of weeks since they actually have some adhesive um, protectors to cover the stuff that actually stick with the water. So I felt much better after talking to him, thinking that I'm like, okay, I'm not going to die like it's in a week or so if I don't get this lung transplant. So that was very comforting. And then there's a procedure they can do to kind of like get rid of the loop that causes the palpitations. But it's a high risk surgery for me. And the way my heart is, it's almost reversed with the size my right side is huge and my left side is almost normal so they didn't want to do that thank goodness because I wasn't going to do that one anyway because the last time I did a right heart catheter I used to do those once a year they didn't give me enough sedative and I could feel them cutting into me and I screamed and I was trembling Oops. so what they did was they decided to put me on amiodarone which is a medication that helps prevent palpitations there we go. It helps prevent the palpitations, and if you do get them, they're a lot weaker. And of course, the day I was going to get just they were thinking about discharging me, I had a bout of palpitations, and they had to come in and give me another dose of that stuff that stops your heart for a minute, like a couple seconds. And the low dose worked that time, so they were all amazed. It's like, you just went through that like a champ, and I'm like, it doesn't. It didn't bother me, but I have a very high pain tolerance, except when it comes to my back. Uh, and I knew it was going to be a very short visit if they were sending me to the dialysis unit in Duke, which is basically for observation. They put a, um, a wireless EKG machine thing on me, a telemetry machine, so they can monitor me. Um, so I just brought my book, It, you know, because I have, I've, 
gotten obsessed ever since the new movie, so I wanted to read it. That way I know what to expect going into chapter two next year. It's coming out close to my birthday, so yay, hopefully I make it that long. And hopefully I make it to May 18th, because May 18th I have tickets to see Sweeney Todd performed by a local civic theater, and I'm really excited to see that. Um, I didn't bother with a computer, I just had my phone and book, and I just, I read a lot of it, so now I'm just home getting myself back together. Um, I did play a lot of Quinn when I was up there, you know, because thanks Garrett, <laughs> you know, Shane Dawson and Garrett and Drew and Rylan and Bobby, they're all talking about Quinn, and Garrett said he had a link, so he's my favorite out of the group. So I went ahead and joined, and there was actually Star Trek up there, and they had this whole set of Anton Yelchin Star Trek series called Glitched, and they all like look like they're glitching and they move. I was like, yes. So I'll insert my information right here, and you can add me and friend me. I collect Marvel, not as serious as I do the others. I collect Screen Queens, Game of Thrones, and Buffy super seriously. I'm not. I don't care about the numbers. Like as long as I have a card. From the series, like, in the set, I'm fine. I don't care about lows. Like, lo the lower the number, the better. I also collect Marvel and Star Trek, but only from the Kelvin timeline, which is the timeline from the movies. So, um, but it's pretty fun. I've got about, have it, I've done a bunch of trades. And, yeah, from me on there, we can talk, we can trade. Um, I'm one of the few people that don't like Rick and Morty, so I have lots of that to trade. <laughs> and if you're just, this is not sponsored by Quinn at all. This is my own personal experience. Um, if you're just starting out, go through every series, even if you don't like it, and get all the free packs because you can use those for trading material. A lot of newbies don't do that. When they get a trade, they don't have anything to trade for. And they don't just let you give something to somebody. You have to trade at least one item. So make sure you do that if you play Quinn or if you're thinking about it. And you scared to sleep because he deserves it. Because he's the spooky boy. But yeah, that's pretty much where I've been. I'm going to upload this video before my next video because I thought of up a series that I want to do. Um, and you'll see that soon as well. I'm also on the search. I wanted to get a pot ring in and I wanted a dapple or a blue merle. Dapple is what they call, I guess, those smaller rings. Pot ring. Then I saw a graveyard girl get one. I'm like, well, not, well, it's her dad's or whatever. And I'm like, I really wanted one like that. Now, they get it, people want to think that I got it because of that, and it's not. So, but with my condition, as I said, oh, when I originally went to Biden, they said my liver was failing, but they got me on fluids and stuff and had reversed it. So that's good. I'm trying to die again. Um, but when I got to do it, I said basically all my medicine was failing. That was what that first doctor had said, and that that was another thing that hit me hard, along with the lung transplant thing. So, but the other doctor that came in was really nice and basically said, "That's not quite accurate. I mean, you are still here. You're able to get out." But um, I am on the search for a medium to long-haired, solid like cat, preferably younger, so it can adjust to the other cats. And I wanted a female because I wanted to tailor reputation swift because I think she's become my new anchor and the. Uh, just she makes me happy and, and takes my mind off things and kind of like what Aunt used to and it's been a while since I've been able to find an anchor because it's, I think that's about it it's all my notes I'm just glancing at them to make sure um Greedy has been non-stop cleaning since I've been home <laughs> she's tired <laughs> um, literally like if I get up to go to the bathroom She'll push the door open and come jump up here and like start hitting me like this with her head and just hang on like a sloth. She's very clingy and she's usually not that bad. She used to be like that, but I don't know. But I will see you guys later in the next video that I plan on shooting right after this or very soon after. Um, it's going to be a series of videos. I'm going to shoot a bunch of time. That way I can edit them and go ahead and schedule them. That way I can get back on a schedule at least once a week. I don't know what day is best. So please, if you have a day that you're on YouTube more than others or that you're more apt to use YouTube, put it down because some people do weekends, some people do weekdays. 
I don't know which day is the best. Anyway, this is the whole demonetization unless you get 4,000 dollars or 4,000 4, view hours of view time. I think that's what it was saying. I heard people saying that's really gonna discourage smaller YouTubers from wanting to be a creator. But I want to do this as like an outlet to just have fun and get stuff off my mind and you know do what we've been doing. Hopefully, a little bit more interesting. And I might change the channel to just Denma because lazy NPC. He's trying to work out how to get how to stream on Twitch and stuff like that and record his um like raids and stuff in a while so I might just make him like a sub channel on my account and upload his videos once he's done editing it because I'm doing all his work for him mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, and just change this from the Denma but our Twitter and like the Facebook page and I think will still be us together so and I have a private snapchat and all that stuff if you want to talk to me it's down below we've got our wow blizzard id number thing battle tags we've got those below everything so anyway you want to talk to us let us know and i missed the letters to anton event that i always host i wasn't able to get mine up because i was in the er so i hope you like this series and it's gonna bring back some good memories so anyway I will see you guys next time.